If this leak turns out to be true, then the RTX 4080 Ti could be over two times faster than the 3090. But is it actually true? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Dromeo. Dromeo is an online course that'll help you learn how to play the drums and reach your goals with organized lessons, practice tools, and live events. With personal feedback from drum legends, 1,000 plus play along songs, and 230 plus courses available, Dromeo is a great way for people of all skill levels to start learning or honing their skills. And best of all, right now for just $1, you get 30 days of Dromeo Edge access and lifetime access to one of their best selling training packs of all time, the drumming system. So if you're interested in learning how to play the drums or just bring yourself to the next level, be sure to click the link in the description below to find out more. So recently the YouTuber Red Gaming Tech shared some more information on the upcoming RTX 4080 Ti and if what he has to say turns out to be true, well this is going to be one heck of a powerful GPU. But before we get into any of that, let's quickly refresh ourselves on the specs of what we know so far of what is supposedly going to be the RTX 4080 Ti. Now this comes from the Twitter leaker copite 7 kimi but all we know about this new GPU so far is that it's codenamed Lovelace. It will apparently be fabricated on the TSMC 5 nanometer node. And according to a videocards.com article based off of posts from both Comp87 Kimi as well as 3dcenter.org, they put together this little chart showing everything else we know so far. So apparently it will have 12 graphics processing clusters, 72 texture processing clusters, 144 streaming multiprocessors for a total of 18,432 CUDA cores, which by the way, that should be roughly a 70 1% increase over the current top GPU that Nvidia produces so that is an enormous increase and then on top of that it should supposedly give you 66.4 teraflops at least that's what they're estimating at 1.8 gigahertz and then they're also guessing that it'll likely have a 384 bit bus and likely GDDR6X. Now as for the GDDR6X I have no idea if they're actually going to use that or like GDDR7 but you know the 384 bit bus does make a whole lot of sense so you know that's everything we know so far about this GPU. GPU. And when you take a look at that and you see 71% more CUDA cores, well, then you can guess that, you know, even if they don't scale all that well, if they're able to get a little bit of IPC increases and they're also able to get, you know, just a little bit of a clock speed increase considering the fact that they're moving to a TSMC 5 nanometer node, well, you should expect to see, I would say, at least 50% more performance out of this GPU. But apparently if what Red Gaming Tech had to say turns out to be true, then the RTX 4080 Ti could end up actually being over two times as fast as the RTX 3090. And, you know, that is probably technically possible, though I think it would be extremely difficult to achieve. But, you know, I'll get into my thoughts on this a little bit more later in the video. But first, let's go ahead and see what he had to say on the matter. So, according to his sources, NVIDIA is actually not surprised by the performance targets of RDNA 3. And, you know, in a previous video, he talked about those performance targets. And according to his sources, RDNA 3 is actually aiming for a 2.5 times increase in performance over RDNA 2. And he actually specified that as the 7900 XT or their next flagship GPU should be two and a half times faster than the 6900 XT. Now, he didn't really know whether or not that was actually, you know, in rasterized performance, such as DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 performance, or if it meant ray tracing performance. So, you know, we probably should take this with a little bit of a grain of salt as we don't know the exact type of performance that he's talking about here. And in fact, we could be talking about ray tracing performance on top of maybe some sort of DLSS they got working. So yeah, we don't know the exact specifics here, but you know, either way, if it does end up being two and a half times faster at anything that's really really impressive and I'm guessing here that you know AMD is going to probably at least get another 50% more performance out of this now the reason why I'm not totally convinced that they're going to get two and a half times faster performance in say DirectX 11 is because you know even if they do end up going with the MCM design uh, approach that he was talking about where they actually use 280 compute unit dies and they put them on some sort of substrate where they can talk to each other um, you know even if they do end up doing that which I think that they could do considering the fact that it seems like they have taken some steps with the infinity cache in that sort of direction you know I think it would be incredibly difficult to get it to scale perfectly and in fact if you add on the additional IPC that they could potentially get as well as the additional clock speed he's talking about two and a half times performance whereas if you just doubled the amount of compute units you would only be talking about a maximum of two times performance but you know I think that even two times performance would be pretty difficult to achieve and you know I'm not saying that he's wrong here as Red Gaming Tech does have very very good sources 
sources and in the past I have doubted a few things that he said such as the infinity cash I wasn't 100% sure on infinity cash and that didn't end up being totally true but here we're talking about essentially perfect scaling out of doubling the amount of compute units which is hard enough to do on a monolithic design let alone in MCM design but let's just say for a moment that they do get perfect scaling they figured out a ways to make it scale you know 100% there's not any increase in latency or anything like that well then even if that is the case we'd still be talking about them having to get a doubling in the performance per watt and you know although that probably is possible it does seem very hard to achieve and I think in the past AMD uh, when they were talking to investors I believe they were talking about aiming for a similar performance per watt increase as they got with RDNA 2 which would be about 50% so maybe they could even exceed 50% performance per watt increase with RDNA 3 over RDNA 2 but a 100% performance per watt increase does seem like that would be just a little bit too difficult to achieve and so even if they are able to get perfect scaling and they're able to get you know maybe a 50% performance per watt or 60% performance per watt gain out of the RDNA 3 architecture you'd probably talking about a GPU with if it does end up having 160 compute units that's drawing probably over 400 watts and I'm just not so sure if that's a great idea for a gaming GPU but you know let's just say for a moment they do end up getting a doubling in performance per watt they they're able to double the amount of compute units and get it to scale perfectly and they're also able to get IPC and clock speed increases then yes you could be talking about two and a half times more performance it's definitely you know technically possible I'm just not 100% convinced on it and you know personally I'm thinking that if you are expecting two and a half times more performance I could definitely see that happening with say ray tracing performance or if they're able to get some sort of DLSS performance but you know in terms of uh, traditional DirectX 11 performance I'm personally betting that they'll probably get somewhere around 50% more performance maybe they'll even get 60% more performance which is still absolutely incredible but let's just say for a moment that they do end up getting that two and a half times more performance well then if that's the case and Nvidia is not surprised by the performance targets of RDNA 3 well then you could bet the yes Nvidia would also be aiming for two and a half times more performance which is absolutely incredible and you know one other thing he talked about that I want to mention here before we wrap up this video is that you know he was talking about that Nvidia is going to be doubling down on their DLSS which to me makes a whole lot of sense and if they're able to get DLSS 2.0 working in every single application well we could be looking at a doubling in performance just off of that alone and you know DLSS 2.0 looks really really good you can sometimes hardly tell the difference between DLSS 2.0 and your native resolution now there are sometimes artifacts and things that you can see in different games but you know overall the image itself looks very very good and in a lot of games you can see again up to double the amount of performance and so if they're including that in the performance increases then yeah we could easily be seeing a doubling in performance going from our current you know RTX 3000 series GPUs to the RTX 4000 series GPUs and you know two and a half times faster doesn't seem that far off if you're able to get DLSS working at all times but hey that's just what I think let me know your thoughts in the comments below do you think that Nvidia and AMD are actually going to be able to get over two times the amount of performance or do you think like me it'll be probably a little bit closer to 50% more performance let me know your thoughts in the comments below and of course I'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so AMD and Nvidia get more stock also if you want to see more click here you won't be disappointed